a Reverend Calvin Taylor Skinner and Dr. Alicia Lola Jones from, from the, the UK, UK. And, and you're watching The Power of Prophecy. The master prophet is anointed. I mean, this man talked about a black president way before Barack Obama went to USC. I was blown away by the prophecy. The prophecy hit all the marks and told me of my future. I'm listening to this man prophesy to me. I just scream, I said, I'm done. The master prophet began to hear from God. We were trying to wait and hear the rest of the word, but nothing else came. It was just nine, just one, one. Well, God gives certain people certain insight toward guiding in the flow of where God wants us at the time in history that he's put us on earth for. Oh, you know, he's a false prophet. We were called the money church. The love of money is the root of all evil. I did not go into the ministry to get rich. I got rich doing ministry. It wasn't about taking a vow of poverty. The lack of money is the root of all evil. How can you even be a Christian? and not preach the message of prosperity. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they were rich people, had big houses. When you lack money, you lack choices. You have money, you can do great things in ministry. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. I was almost, I wanted 
to die from how I was done wrong. I cried out every night looking for a helping hand. But that's when it happened. Jesus took me and he held me close, gave me love, revealed my heart, helped me grow. I'm better because my God made me holy, He's available. Anytime, try him out, he'll change your life. This life tries to leave you so bitter, bitter, bitter. But you must believe God will make it better, better, better. Bishop elect here. And Prophetess Jessica Jones. Why the seed, Prophetess you Jessica? Know what? Why not the seed, Prophet Ooh. Joshua? You know, when I begin to think about the seed, I begin to look at how the seed makes a way where it seemed there was no way, Prophet Joshua. Mm. Where the seed begins to go to places that I could not really access on my own. That's right. And you know, the seed by nature is an overcomer. That's right. You know, you think about how many obstacles the seed overcomes in order to generate. And so if there's an obstacle in my life, I want to encourage you to put a seed on it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's funny, as we begin to talk about the seed, I began to think of the word groundbreaker. And the seed mm. is groundbreaking, you know? Have you ever seen a tree that's busted up a road? Yeah. A tree, right? It started out as a seed, you know? It started out as some small thing and it managed to take and break up concrete and it managed to grow and almost change the shape of everything else that's around it just so it can make a way through and that's wow. what the seed does in our lives. So the, so the seed can shift me from being in a hard place to being in a place that is groundbreaking. That's absolutely right, Prophet Joshua. When you begin to look at that, the seed is so strong that it can begin to set you up in position such that the obstacles won't break you, but instead the obstacles around you have to adjust now to accommodate. Now, Prophet Jessica, what happens when the people of God do the $1,000 seed or more? Like today, the Dr. E. Bernard Jordan requested that there are many of us that stand in faith with that $1,000 seed or more. Now, Prophet Jessica, what do we call that seed and what's gonna happen when oh. they sow it? You know, Prophet Joshua, we call that seed the real estate seed, Prophet Joshua. And what begins to happen when you sow that seed, well, first off, you get a one-on-one -on -one with Master Prophet Dr. E. Bernard Jordan, um, and you begin to hear what thus saith the Lord for your life, right on the phone with the Master Prophet. You have an opportunity to go ahead and ask a question, but not only that, the company of prophets begin to speak into your life as well. You'll get two phone calls from the company of prophets as they begin to also speak with us. Mm, and just when, and as well, right there at the sacred desk, we will be sharing breaking news. Yeah, absolutely. You'll hear Prophet Joshua. Or Prophet Stephen. Or Prophet Stephen, that's Or right. whomever is at the sacred desk acknowledging <laughs> that See, That's right, that even the children yes, are. Yes, the children are beginning oh to Oh my cry God, out. my God, it's a blessing. So listen, family, we want to encourage you, take this time, take these moments to begin to take advantage of the opportunity. I didn't see that. Worship, sowing the seed, is really an opportunity. Absolutely is an opportunity and certainly an opportunity you do not want to miss. So go ahead and take advantage and take an opportunity with many of the ways that we have so that you can get your seed in the ground. And you know also, good ground's got a cash app. Good ground has got a cash good app. Good ground has a cash app. And so if you have cash app, you want to go ahead and put in dollar sign my, my Zoe, Zoe Church. Well, wait a minute, it's my Zoe Church. No, it's my Zoe Church. It's our 
Zoe Listen, Church. Dollar sign, dollar sign my Zoe, Zoe Church. Church. And if it's your very first time going ahead and doing that, you want to make sure that you go to zoeministries.com. That's right. And you click on the members tab. On and the members you fill tab. In your Cash App information so that we can attach your Cash App handle with your name. That's right. And listen, we want to go off with these words as we're coming back live, that the seed is nothing more than the harvest of sleep. Yes, and I also want you to remember that destiny is not left up to chance. But, but it is a matter of, of choice. choice. Always choose Christ. God bless you. Peace. Destiny is not left up to chance, but it is just a matter of choice. Praise the Lord. This is Master Prophet Ebenard Jordan and Prophet Joshua Nathaniel Jordan, Bishby Lett. Well, we're going to talk to you about the Blessing Plan 13 that's coming up and you want to be a part of it. Why would a person want to be a part of the Blessing Plan? You know, Master Prophet, why wouldn't a person want to be a part of the Master Prophet's Blessing Plan? Amen. You know, Master Prophet, the Blessing Plan truly is what it says. It is a Blessing Plan. It is loaded, loaded, loaded with so many benefits. Now, the only people that are not a part of the blessing plan are those that don't want to be blessed. Come on. But if you become a part of the blessing plan, there are so many benefits in this blessing plan. But I want to talk for a moment about the book. So before we feed anything else, we want to talk about how the blessing plan feeds your mind. You're going to get five books that's going to be coming to you that will not be found in Christian bookstores. What would you say about these books and materials that they're going to be getting. You know, Master Prophet, it is the difference between having a game-changing key and being locked out, Master Prophet. You know, one of the things that I'm reminded of is how many books are on average in American reads. I believe it says about five books a year in American reads. But because we're a part of the Blessing Plan, we get to double that. So we are not only reading books, but we're taking on specialized knowledge that we can't find in a Christian bookstore. We can't buy these books on Amazon. We can't find them on Barnes and Noble. You can't find them on a website either. No, you can't. They're only available to the Blessing Plan. So when we begin to look at this, we have one book here called Introducing the Plantation Fruit Show. Um, we're going to talk about that in a moment. So let's go to a commercial. When we come back, we're going to talk about these five books. Register now for the Master Prophets Blessing Plan 13. As a member of the Master Prophets Blessing Plan, you'll receive five exclusive textbooks, workbooks written by the Master Prophet, Archbishop E. Bernard Jordan himself. Every month, you'll receive the Chef's Garden Box with fresh vegetables straight from the farm to your doorstep, access to Master Prophet's library app, access to Prophecology Winter 2023, and special seminars and prophetic coaching on the Zoe Virtual Campus. You do not want to miss out on the Master Prophet's Blessing Plan 13. Register now by calling our partner care line at 888 888- 831-0434. Once registered, your tithes and your offerings will go towards the cost of the Master Prophet's Blessing Plan 13, which is only $5,500. Once you fulfill the Master Prophet's Blessing Plan requirements, you have the opportunity to go to the next level and become a member of the Mastermind for an additional $8,500. As a member of the Mastermind, you'll get exclusive access to seminars led by experts in various industries for those who are ready to expand their minds and businesses. Do not be left out. Sign up now by calling 888-831-0434. Well, praise God, we're back. Uh, You know, I'm looking at the blessing plan and I'm looking at how much God wants to get ready to bless you. In the blessing plan, 13, we're going to be looking at introducing the plantation preacher. Wow. Now, the Israelites and oppressed people in the Bible represents the plight and experience of African Americans and African slaves. And we begin to see them in captivity. The plantation preacher is going to begin to reveal how so many preachers are preaching for 
the oppressor that keeps the system maintained of slavery versus the liberation of its people. What would you say about this, Prophet Joshua? You know, Master Prophet, I can't prophesy against Pharaoh while still being on Pharaoh's payroll. And so when I am a liberator, Master Prophet, that means that I'm willing to speak truth to power, uh, that I'm not uh, taking the what's being offered from Pharaoh's table, but I'm speaking what thus saith the Lord, Master Prophet. And so therefore, plantation owners study and knew the best way to keep the slave system in place. And so the plantation preacher, in a lot of ways, was used to maintain that order. In this book and in this work, it will cause you to distinguish in the community who is the plantation preacher and who is the preacher that's going to bring about liberation. And I tell you something, you're going to be blessed by the teachings that are in that work. Another book is going to be the prophetic blessing. And as great as the concept of being blessed is our culture, it is freely given and received by those who do not believe in God. If you search the hashtag, hashtag blessed on social media, you will be confronted with a sea of content featuring the word. People are not afraid to declare they are blessed. They just don't. They just don't know how to say it. And so therefore, we're going to be teaching you about the prophetic blessing and what it is and what it is not. And in the prophetic blessing, you will begin to learn about the money blessing. Do you not know that when God blesses you, he increases you, not only spiritually and mentally, but financially and physically? What would you say about the necessity of the blessing in the life of the believer? You know, it's, it's, it's quintessential, Master Prophet. It's so important that the blessing rest. And, and, you know, it, one of the things that I'm reminded of is the first time God says blessing in the Bible, he begins to let Abraham know what he's going to do, that I'm going to make you a great nation, that all nations on the earth are going to call you blessed, and I'm going to make your name great, Master Prophet. So when we are blessed, when God has given us the money blessing, Master Prophet, that means that God has given us access to infinite wealth. Amen. You know, we got the wind chimes sounding in the background and I love it because every time the wind happens you also get a sound that accompanies it you know and even in the upper room they heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind and with that sound came the gift of tongues yes master. amen when the wind shows up there's a sound that accompanies so guess what the next book is entitled but God. But God. You know, this but God is a phrase that is a conjunction, but God. And in a term that connects other words and phrases. So when we've used that word but, it negates what is before it. You know, I was sick, but God. Deep in sin, but God. Tragedy was headed my direction, but God. I was in pain. But God, what do you think about this whole concept of but God? You know, Master Prophet, it begins to point out that God is ever present, Master Prophet, in our present, in our futures, Master Prophet, that I know my condition looks one way, but I know God's covenant says another, Master Prophet. And so therefore, but is usually between two sentences or two phrases or two worlds. And when we begin to explain this book in the blessing plan, but God, you're going to learn how to negate what does not work and activate what does. Amen. In this work, we have a textbook and a workbook that's getting ready to be released. So we got the plantation preaching, the prophetic blessing, but God. But here is a workbook and a textbook, the prophetic Kairos and Kronos. Now, the ebb and flow of time are both under God's control. God is the only place from which we may gain knowledge about the happening in our lives right now 
and make predictions about the future. And oftentimes when the prophets are prophesying, you sometimes are looking for the chronos and God is speaking in the realm of Kairos. What would you like to say about this whole idea of time? Because see, one is chronological and another is a season. Yes and yes, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan. You know, um, it reminds me of something that the Word of God says, that there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. And so, you know, Master Prophet, when we think about the Word of the Lord, it's really a Kairos uh, moment, Master Prophet. It is a moment that God has spoken to us for a particular season. And versus a a chronos word, which is a chronological word, a word that is more linear, master prophet. And so when we look at God's timing and God's word, we love the fact, master prophet, that he moves in seasons, master prophet, times and spaces. Yes. And so therefore, I don't want you to miss the season, the time and the spaces. So the prophetic blessing, but God, the plantation preacher, Kairos Kronos. Wow. Amen. Understanding the season. This is going to help you to understand your prophetic word that you might be looking at a chronological fulfillment when God really wants to get you seasoned for the fitness. Some of us, like Israel, was told about the promised land. That's right. They could have made it in 40 days, but it took them 40 years to get Kairos ready. That's right for the season of the promise. Although the chronos could happen in 40 days, but a lot of people don't want to do the kairos work in order to get the chronos effect. Mm. What do you think about that? You know, Master Prophet, it's so powerful um, when we think about it, Master Prophet, because it was, I was reminded, I believe it's in Genesis 15, that God speaks to Abraham and he lets him know that uh, you shall be afflicted um, in a land that is not your own for 400 years. And it's interesting that the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness literally for a tithe of that. And so you see that there is a Kairos moment in that, that God had a particular season, though it was only a 40 day journey, God had a particular season that they were to enter in. And you know, it's so powerful, Master Prophet, that there's not just a textbook, but there's a workbook, Master Prophet, yes. for the prophetic Kairos and Kronos that we can actually work our lives, work our prophecies through Master Prophet to walk into our divine season. Amen. And I want you to get ready to walk into your season. So the blessing plan. The amount is on the screen and you need to go ahead and be a part of the prophetic Master Prophet's blessing plan. And that's if you want to get a future. Now listen, we are in a recession and people that have joined the mastermind, which is another extension of the blessing plan, that if you once you do the blessing plan, we'll upgrade you into a mastermind, which is a whole nother world. But we have just cited recently when the Master Prophets, in the Master Prophet Blessing Plan, when this recession would be over. And we saw some dates. This is why you want to be connected because you'll get strategy on how to invest. I want to talk to you today about the future that is calling you, the future that is pulling you. Call the number on the screen right now and get on the list to be a part of the blessing plan. We want to get these books into your life. We want to get the profits in your life. Plus, they get coaching online, don't yes, they? Yes, they do, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan. Coaching that is available only for those that are a part of the Master Profits Blessing Plan. You want to call the number on your screen today. Speak with one of the live moderators. Sign yourself up. Sign your whole family up, amen, to be a part of the Master Profits Blessing Plan. You don't want to miss this advantage, this opportunity, amen, to be blessed, Master profit. And when you miss your day of visitation, you live in the valley of regret. I'll see you in the prophetic blessing plan today. Peace.
Please welcome the Taruma Offering app. For us givers, getting organized and staying on track with our contributions has never been easier. Create an account using the email you already use with Zoe Ministries. Yes, you can calculate your salary or you can calculate your benefit. After entering the salary amount or the benefit amount and pressing go, specific amounts will appear with the suggested contributions for each category. To view your calculation history reports, tap the word history. To give your Taruma offering or your donation, tap the word give. So what are you waiting for? So turn on your mobile device and visit the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and download the Taruma app now. Thank you. What's the difference between the Mayasar and the Taruma? Yeah, so the Mayasar is the tenth. It's, it's specifically the tenth part. But the Taruma is the first fruit offering. It's the first gift that we give to our supervising priest. And here it's our dad, you know, our father, our father, the master prophet. So the Taruma is the first fruit, dad, while the Maasard or the tithe is the tenth. Two totally different things. And you know, they don't even belong in the same basket. They don't belong in the same baskets, but yet most churches, or not churches, but the people stick them in the same basket. Yes. And it violates the purpose of what they were intended for. Mm -hmm. We like to look at the tithe, the Mayasar, is the tent that goes to the house of God. Yes. The building of ministry, the house of the Lord, the building of the temple. But then where does the Taruma go, Prophet Joe? Wow, you know, that's such a great question, Dad, because, you know, the scriptures say it. It's interesting that right after it says, you robbed me in the Ma'asar and the Taruma, it says to bring all of the Ma'asar into the storehouse, bring all of the tithes into the <laughs> storehouse. And so we've been conflating that, you know, okay, we're bringing the tithes, we're bringing the offerings into the storehouse. But no, that's not what God says. We bring the tithe into the storehouse, and it's our Taruma that goes to the mouth of God. God, which is our supervising priest, the master prophet. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Yes. That's where they store the grain in the temple. They um, took care of how things were to be taking place in the temple. And um, all of this stuff was supposed to be taken care of in the temple. In the temple. But then if we begin to look at that, that means something is going to go without. Something is going to go denied. We bring the tithe to the storehouse, mm -hmm. and I have been guilty of doing a lot of stuff and taking care of the grain for the storehouse, doing stuff for the storehouse. But then I neglected the taruma that goes to the priest. The first of all the first fruit, according to Ezekiel 4430, goes to the priest. Stay connected. We'll talk more about this. See if you're violating. And if you are, you can correct it today. Make sure that you know that the tithe goes to the house of God, but the taruma go to the mouth of God. And have you been serving the mouth of God? Introducing the Prophecy Now app. Your prophetic words from the Master Prophet and the Company of Prophets await you in one place. Just sign in or create an account using the email you've already given to the ministry. You'll receive easy access to all of your prophetic words, a daily message from the Master Prophet, a quick option to give your Taruma and or donations, and so much more. Go from giving to living here on the Prophecy Now app. 
Who you FaceTiming? You FaceTiming Jesus? You on the FaceTime with Jesus? What y'all doing? He's getting in the ground. He's getting in the ground. Oh, you're getting your seed in the ground. You're getting your seed in the ground. There's seed in the ground. Wow. Now, wait a minute. You can get your seed into the ground right from your phone? Yeah, you can. Wait a minute. Now, text to give. Text to give? Text to give, yeah. Never Hold heard on. of it? You never heard of it? Wait a minute. Y'all look. Text to give. How do we do it? Come on, because there's some that have their phones out now, too, and they want to worship. How can we worship? Uh, just go onto your mobile phone, type in 646-762-0433. And All right. you get in there, type my worship, and easy you, like that. And there, and there's a QR. You know, when you hold your phone up there? QR code as well. Right hold there. it up. Scan it, a right? QR it code. Right. There's a QR wow. code. You just got to put right. your phone right there on the camera. Uh -huh. and then you just type it right there, and it takes you. You don't do the website? You don't do the website? Zoe, because no, you can do that no, on your no, phone. No. Okay, go, pull it up on your pull phone. Pull it up on your phone. Go to Zoe Zoe Ministries. Ministries. Com. Com. Okay, and click on that nice little blue donate button. The button. You just put in. Or you can go to bishopjordan.com. Yes. And you Bishop can always Jordan. click on the link there. Or maybe they want to call it in. Now you, you can know call what it in is as Naomi. well. We call can it call it in. Call Moderators it in. are standing by right yes. now. Call then, in your seed. Yes, and you can call it in at 888-831-0434. Or the lifeline number. Now, we no. grew up on that lifeline yes, number. Yes, we did. That lifeline number is older than you are. Stop telling your age. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> 212-316-2177. Seven, seven, seven. Again, that's two, two one two three one six two one seven seven. It's called with some expectation right. because God loves a cheerful giver. Indeed. And our seed is always going before us. That's God right. bless you and remember that destiny, destiny is not, not left up to chance, chance but, but it's, it's a matter of choice. Destiny is not left up to chance. It's a matter of choice. Praise the Lord, this is Master Prophet E. Bernard Jordan and... Prophetess Deborah Jordan. And... Bishop Elect! <laughs> our loud mouth son. Uh, all right, we'll do loud. it one more time. We'll do it one more time. No, we're going to keep this just the way it is. What? Because that's, that's, that's who you are. You're right, you're right. This is who you are. Why be God fake? made you that way. He sure God. did. He sure did. Does well, he a fearfully wonderful man? Well, we want to welcome you to the Power of Prophecy. You're going to get music. Music. What else? Um, prophecy. Prophecy. You're going to get breaking news. And you're going to hear the word of the Lord that the master prophet, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan, will be teaching. That's and right. the company of prophets. That's right. That will be prophesied. Listen, and teaching. you got about a healthy 15 seconds to go and get your water, get your Bible, get your smart devices. Bathroom break? It's because we're coming live. Well, let me just say this thing. When you connect with the power of prophecy, your life will start up just yes. like that engine. Yes, it will. Because guess what? You've been on pause all your life, Come on, you. and you need a restart. You gonna take me out. I'll see you live right now. And remember, destiny is it's not, not left, left up to chance, chance but, but it's, it's a, a matter, matter of choice. choice. Destiny is not left up to chance, but it's just a matter of choice. The master prophet is anointed. I mean, this man talked about a black president way before Barack Obama went to the U.S. I was blown away by the prophecy. The prophecy hit all the marks and told me of my future. Now, listen to this man prophesy to me. I just scream, I said, I'm done. The master prophet began to hear from God. We were trying to wait and hear the rest of the word, but nothing else came. It was just nine, one, one. 
But God gives certain people certain insight toward guiding in the flow of where God wants us at the time in history that he's put us on earth for. Oh, you know, he's a false prophet. We were called the money church. The love of money is the root of all evil. I did not go into the ministry to get rich. I got rich doing ministry. It wasn't about taking a vow of poverty. The lack of money is the root of all evil. How can you even be a Christian and not preach the message of prosperity? Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they were rich people, had big houses. When you lack money, you lack choices. You have money, you can do great things things in ministry. Believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper. And welcome to the 7 p.m. service of Zoe Ministries, The Power of Prophecy. I greet you with Jesus joy on behalf of Dr. E. Bernard Jordan and leading lady prophet Deborah Jordan. We're certainly grateful for this evening service. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this afternoon for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your divine provision today. We thank you that we can, times like these, we can trust you, Father. We thank you today for healing our bodies, saving our souls, renewing our minds in you today. Father, we call upon you as our Savior, as our King, as our Redeemer. We call on that great name. You are our healer and our sustainer today. We call on your name and we say, hallowed be your name. You're glorious and worthy to receive praise. Thank you for giving us the victory again and again. Father, we can say, Lord God, that you've caused our feet to skip across mountains, our soul to be set free, and your praises are continually on our lips. And so, Father, we enter your presence with thanksgiving. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We thank you today, Lord God, that you sent your word to heal our hearts and heal our minds today. We thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us into all truth. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, our comforter. We thank you today for the Holy Spirit that reminds us of things to come today. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that gives us divine utterance and so we'll know what to say at the same hour. We thank you today for leading and guiding us. Oh God, for revealing truth to us today, giving us a discerning heart to know right from wrong. You sent your word to heal us. Your word sanctifies us. Your word cleanses us. Your word gives us the faith that we need for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We thank you today that that word sanctifies us. That word is life, oh God. We thank you today, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit that comforts us. The Holy Spirit that convicts us, the Holy Spirit that gives us the advantage today. And Father, we thank you that we have no confidence in the flesh, but we trust you today to lead, to lead us and to guide us. You said you'd not leave us comfort, comfortless, but you would give us the Holy Spirit. We thank you today, oh God, that we can be led by the Holy Spirit. I pray today that every partner Everyone that's listening to this prayer would get a hunger for the presence of God, would get a hunger to hear from you, that would get a heart to be sensitive to your voice today. You said in your word that my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not hear. Help us, oh God, to have sensitive hearts to hear your voice and obey today, Lord God. We don't want to be left out not knowing what to do. We don't want any sudden surprises because we didn't seek you today, but you you said that we're to seek you with all of our hearts. You said in all of your ways, acknowledge me and I'll direct your path. Lead us to the rock that is hiding us. Don't help us to be, don't help us, to, uh, um, don't bring us to the, help us not to be in a place where we're stubborn arrogant, but help us to humble ourselves before you and trust you. We don't know the way, but we trust you to guide us today. Father, we won't trust in our confidence and our education and our own experience, but Lord, every day we'll seek you. Oh God, today help us that we're not fall in pride and arrogance, but we'll stay with a humble heart before you seeking your direction today. Now, Father, minister your word through your prophets today. Remember Dr. Bernard Ebenard 
God Jordan, we pray for your servant today. We pray for long life and health to his body. We pray your protection over his life, oh God. And Father, I thank you today that he's advancing as he globalized the prophetic. Keep him in the center of your will today. We pray for our leading lady prophet, Deborah Jordan. We pray your peace and your strength on her. Lord God, that you renew her and encourage your heart today. And I thank you for advancing your word in her heart today. We pray for the company of prophets today. Anoint them afresh. Keep them, oh God, sensitive to hearing your voice and obey today. And we thank you that Zoe ministry is a debt-free ministry, flourishing in this hour. We thank you for our partners today. We pray today that you would strengthen their hearts. We pray that every family would be blessed and brought into wholeness today. Nothing missing or broken. That they would walk in the blessing that you've bestowed upon them today. I pray today, Lord God, we rebuke death. We rebuke death, early death, in the name of Jesus. And we speak life and wholeness to their beings today. And I thank you today, even if there's this challenges in our world system, that they flourish even as Goshen today. I thank you, Lord God, for the word of the Lord, the word of healing and hope to them today. Remember every ministry that's associated with Zoe Ministries, that they flourish in this anointing today. Move by your power and might today. We trust you today. Help us to speak faith-filled words. Help us to continue to meditate on your word day and night, Lord God, that we may flourish today. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. Help us so day, oh God, that we will speak those words and experience abundant life that you said in John 10, 10. I thank you for the fullness. I thank you for the latter rain and refreshings in our bodies today. Anoint us afresh and cause a hunger to seek you with all of our hearts today. God, I thank you for revival fires burning. I thank you for a move of the Spirit of God among your prophets and your people. God, I pray today that you would open their eyes and that they would intercede like never before. We cast down every plot of the enemies, those that would plot evil schemes, wicked schemes to hurt and to harm others. We cancel those assignments in the name of Jesus. We come against terrorist plots in the name of Jesus. We come against every type of sickness and disease. Father, you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon you and with your stripes we're made whole, we're healed today. We receive that healing anointing. We receive that prosperity anointing. We receive an infilling of your power. Holy Spirit, breathe in our hearts today and cause us to trust you in this hour. We're leaning on you. We're depending on you for you are our source and we bless you for it. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Will somebody bless the Lord? Will you magnify the Lord with me? Oh, open your mouth and tell God thank you again. Yes, yes, you that are listening on YouTube, those that are in Facebook, those that are on Instagram, yes, give God a verbal yes in your heart. Amen and amen. Well, I want to welcome you to the power of prophecy. My name is Prophet Stephen Brown. It is a joy, amen, to serve the Lord. I don't know about you, but I know the Lord for myself. Do you know him? Amen, and you know him in the pardon of your sin. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior today, I want to extend the opportunity to you to you can make Jesus Lord of your life today. The scripture says that anyone that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You know, in Romans it said, the wages or the cost of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. And I have abundant life because Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Lord. I said it. I said Jesus, not the universe. Jesus is my Lord and Savior and Redeemer today. Make no step or no make mistakes about it. You must come at the door. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, my God, my God, you need him. Amen today. And so today you can confess your sins. The scripture clearly says that if we confess our sins, that God, I'm talking about uh, John, 1 John 1 and 9, it says if we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And though the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if we confess, what does it say? Help me there. 
confess with our, we confess with our mouth, believe in our hearts, the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved today. If you can, Lord, I'm sorry. I made some mistakes. I've done some wrong things, but Lord, I confess them before you. Now I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart today. Be the Lord of my life. Save me, oh God. Save me in my mind, in my spirit, man. Renew in me a right spirit. One of the psalmists said, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit today. Oh, if you said that prayer with me today, guess what? The Spirit of God's coming. You, Jesus Christ lives in your heart. You're saying, Lord, make me again. Renew my spirit. God, I will live for you today. Give God a yes today. Yes, I'm talking about an, not just an experience, but I'm talking about an encounter with God today. That's what it means to accept Jesus. It says the Lord, repent, accept him in your heart, and then turn on onto Jesus. Walk in him today. Stay connected today. Well, we're going to go further before we get into the lineup of the company of prophets. I'm going to introduce Elder David Bratton. He's going to introduce those that will lead us further in this worship experience. But before we do that, I want to, I want you to make contact with the prophets. Before we do that, I want you to make contact with the prophets today. Amen. Go ahead, sow that $100 seed. You see the numbers on the screen as we worship. Go ahead. We're still sowing. We still believe in God because I'm telling you right now, if you search, seek for him, you'll find him. Oh, my God, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while his, he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. Oh, man, oh, man, I'm telling you, it's time for a godly encounter. Don't you get out. Average. Don't you get lukewarm, but all oh, get on fire for God today. Amen. Elder David Bratton. God bless you, everybody. Amen. It's such a blessing to be here. Amen. And thank God for our Archbishop and uh, Pastor Deborah Jordan. We're just grateful. Uh, oh, bless God. Me? Hold on. I thought I was on. Yeah, I'm on. God bless you. Somebody turn me on. Yeah, you got me? Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's an honor to be here. We thank God for our Archbishop E. Bernard Jordan and our Pastor Deborah. We are blessed and highly favored. And God is doing great things. And we've just come to worship and give God a glory. Yes. Amen. And we thank God for such an anointed psalmist here with us today. Uh, sang with me uh, probably all over the country and all over the world. And uh, we thank God that she's here with us. Let's praise God for Evangelist Sierra Hill. Come on, clap your hands.
Miss Sierra, it's good to hear you. Glad to have you here with us here at Zoe. Amen. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Amen. God bless you so much. Amen. Well, people of God, it is Sunday, and we're certainly glad for this wonderful opportunity to bless the Lord. It's a wonderful opportunity to give praise unto the Lord God of our salvation. Well, we're going to get the lineup of the Company of Prophets for this Sunday, September 25th. This is our evening worship experience, the prophetic encounter with our leading uh, prophet, the master prophet, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan and leading lady, Prophet Deborah Jordan. Well, we're going to get the lineup of the Company of Prophets at this time. Let's start off with our worthy class masters. Number one, we always start with our worthy class master, Deborah Jordan, amen, who is live with us in the studio. God bless you, worthy class master, Deborah Jordan, amen. All right, next worthy class master, please announce yourself at this time. Worthy class master, Gloria Jean Kelly, good evening. Good evening, worthy class master, Gloria Jean Kelly, amen. Next worthy class master. Amen, amen, all right, amen, and we, uh, we know that worthy class master Maddie Young is not with us today, amen, in this service, and also worthy class, I mean, and uh, prophet Antoinette Harris is not in this service as well, amen. Um, if there's no more worthy class masters, let's go to the leaders of the temple seers, amen, or all temple seers. I'm prophet Stephen Brown, I'm a temple seer. Next temple seer. Prophet Terry Stenson. Bless you, Prophet Terry, since that you are number four. And uh, Prophet Stephen, I will be here until 10 p.m. Amen. And note it to 10, 10 p.m. Amen. Next temple seer. Let's go to the temple guards, all temple guards, including the leader. Temple God, Cynthia Dawson. God bless you, Temple God, Cynthia Dawson. Good evening to you. Amen. Amen. Next Temple Guard. Amen. Prophet William Richards. Bless you, Prophet William Richards. Amen. Bless you. Next Temple Guard. Temple Guard, Prophetess Denise Bullock. Bless you, Prophet Denise Bullock. You are number seven. Next, Temple Guard. Let's open up to our initiates and neophytes tonight. Prophetess Diamond King. Bless you. You're number eight, Prophet Diamond King. Amen. Next, Temple Guard. Hallelujah. Initiates and neophytes, anyone else? Amen. Well, the prophets are coming, and we're Prophet so Maxine Wise. Amen. All right. Number nine, Prophet Maxine Wise. Bless you. you I'll, be, I'll be here to eight, and I'll come back at nine. Here to eight, and then returning at 9 p.m. Bless you. You're number nine. Amen. Thank you. I receive the blessing. Amen. Next, Prophet. Amen. Next, Prophet. Any more prophets? Amen. Prophet Green. Iris Green, Prophet Iris Green, you're number 10. Thank you. Prophet Iris Green, bless you. Amen. Next, Prophet. Amen. Anyway, so, so far we have Worthy Class Master Deborah Jordan, number two, Worthy Class Master Glory Jean Kelly, number three, Prophet Stephen Brown, number four, Prophet Terry Sinset here to 10 p.m., number five, Prophet Cynthia Dawson, six, Prophet William Richards, seven, Prophet Denise Bullock, eight, Prophet Diamond King, nine, Prophet Maxine Wise, who's with us to eight, then will return after nine, amen, and then 10, Prophet Iris Green. Anyone else? 
All right. Well, we're certainly glad, amen, for this afternoon, amen. We're certainly glad, and I want to repeat with our worthy class master, Deborah Jordan, who has asked everyone, everyone to sow, amen, the $100 seed, amen. It's going to do something for you. We always worship the Lord with the seed today, and I want to encourage you to get your $100 seed in the ground. Let me tell you, there is something about sowing. There is, you know, the scripture says the Lord gives seed to the sower. And I'm telling you today, as you worship the Lord and sown the $100 seed, you're going to have a testimony this week. That's right. This week, expect God to move on your behalf. Let's get ready because there's a testimony of victory that's about to visit your home today. Watch God work even as you sow the seed, the $100 seed. I want to extend the invitation to everyone watching. If you're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you are, I want you to acknowledge the Lord, amen, and worship him, amen, and sow the $100 seed. It's so easy to do. Just text to give. It's so easy. Text that word donate or my worship to 646 762 0433. Amen. 646 762 0433. You know what? You may be sowing it for someone else in your family or situation. There's someone that is going in cycles, going in the wrong direction, doing some things, but you need God to do something, to turn some things around. I want to encourage your heart right now to sow that 100 on, on behalf of someone today. Uh, you need a miracle. You need God to turn some things around. I want you to sow that seed. You can always go to zoeministries.com or bishopjordan.com. Go to the website and sow that seed as well. Amen. Before we go further and we introduce the master prophet, um, I'm just curious, are there any of the prophets joining us for this lineup for this uh, evening service? Prophet Latoya Dawkins, God bless. God bless you, Prophet Latoya Dawkins. You are number 11. Next, Prophet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know why you're, why you're sowing that seed? Keep a praise on your heart. The Lord loves a cheerful giver as you're sowing tonight. Make sure you stay in a, pray, a place of praise. Amen. We believe God this week. And I told, tell you today, you're about to have a testimony. Everyone that has sown that $100 seed and you're sowing it now for a loved one, for a friend, go ahead and do that $100 seed today. Amen. We believe God. We trust God. We know his word is true today. Go ahead, get that $100 seed. Anyone else? Anyone else? Amen and amen. Well, we serve a right now God. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen today. I want to introduce you, amen, to the man of God who, amen, is responsible for the prophetic order of Mar Elijah. This is the same prophet, amen, that uh, uh, decades ago, amen, stepped out in faith and started Zoe Ministries. This is the same man, amen, where God visited him and spoke to him, and he wrote uh, written judgments, volumes one, two, three, and four, and the word came to pass and is still coming to pass. This is the same prophet, amen, over 900 and some odd days, amen, just before the pandemic uh, really took off, amen, told us what to do, prepared our hearts and our bodies, amen, and not one loss, but we saw in this ministry, God strengthen our physical body. We were taking the vitamin D3 before even scientists and medical sciences were telling us and encouraging us to take the vitamin D3. Many of us were uh, doing walking regimens, losing weight, doing what we got to do to prevent uh, um, a heart disease, whether it was diabetes, whatever the case was, we followed our leader in that. But not only that, during that pandemic, the master prophet began to teach us through his written book, uh, um, Altars, and told us the importance of building altars. And many of us sold that 2000 and 22 Every time the prophet spoke and challenged our heart, we saw God move. We saw God pay off buildings. Amen. By following the word of the Lord. Today, today, there's a sure word in the master prophet. I feel God. I tell you today, every time the master prophet 
spoke a word and challenged us. It was the 200, the 2022. Then at one point we were to sow the 2,222.22. Oh my goodness, we began to build our altar. We began to sow seed after seed. Faith arose in our heart and we saw debt cancellation. We saw God do some mighty things. Even as four letters came down out of the sky and Master Prophet began to speak to our hearts. We sowed, we stored the word of God in our heart and we walked in obedience and we saw God build a hedge of protection over our heart today. I'm telling you today, there is a voice in America, America's black prophet, the Dr. Ebenar Jordan, amen. He's here live with us in the Manhattan studio. Ladies and gentlemen, let's thank God for the master prophet, the Archbishop Ebenar Jordan. Would you bless the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Amen, God bless you, God bless you. I hear a song in my heart. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, yes. Because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. 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 when I think of this amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. If it's only for Jesus, because of him, and it just takes that one look mm. in Ooh, his so wonderful good. face, we can become so full of his glory yes. and so full of his grace. We want to thank God for this evening on the first day of Rosh Hashanah. Amen. The new year that God has ordained. In the scripture in Genesis chapter 1, round about verse 14, it says, And he gave us stars in the heaven for signs and for seasons. This is the season that God calls for the earth agricultural new year. And so this evening, my daughter called and said, what are we gonna do with the people for the blast today? And I said, well, Prophet Naomi, it's the day of the Feast of the Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. I says, we need to challenge everyone to do the 5783 or the 5,000, no, $578.30. Seed, whatever your faith allows. And they need to do it as a first fruit, as a teruma to the supervising priests. This is the day in Israel that the priests received all the offering. And when the priests began to receive it, command the blessing. It's almost like it's the first day of the year, it's the first fruit. And at the head of the rosh, which is head. And uh, it would be very interesting, Prophet Stephen, if we looked at um, how that word, um, Rosh, and began to look to see if it has any um, connection. Um, but anyway, it's connected with the first, mm. the head of the month. I kept thinking of the ram mm. because it's the first sign. I was kind of trying to look for the Hebrew word for ram for the, but I think it's a aliel, I believe it is something of that nature. But um, I'll check it when I get to my computer. But one of the things I want to say is that God wants to head up this new year, this new season. Yes. My daughter was, um, they were telling me that Nathan came to the home to the apartment, the city this morning, 
And he had something that he said was a terrible dream. Mm. Four years old. And he is only four years old. Mm. My wife began to tell me what the dream was that he was trying to explain, so I called my daughter, Prophetess Naomi. I said, tell me Nathan's dream. <coughs> Nathan was there in the background trying to describe and um, that door just closed on its own, didn't it? Yes. That's good. Um, that's a good sign. And his dream was that a bear mm. showed up in his dream and got a hold of his hand and wouldn't let it go. So he woke up went in his mother's room and refused to get out of the bed because he was afraid of the bear. I says, I have the interpretation of that dream. She says, what? I says, can't you see it? It's so obvious. She says, no, Bishop, I don't see it. I says, we're getting ready for another bear market this week. Ah, Musha. Yes. And this child is letting us know that there is a bear taking a hold of his hands. He was afraid because he didn't know that the bear was not trying to destroy his hand. He was afraid because he was trying to get away. And there's some of you that are trying to get away with, from this recession get away from this economic despair. And God has been using people like Rosalind and others to teach you how to take bears by the hand mm. and dance with the bears. And so um, I'm so excited. Morning is not coming fast enough for me because I believe Nathan, Nathan, his name in Hebrew actually means a gift or to give. A gift, yeah. And I believe that Nathan may be a prophet, a gift. If there be a prophet among you, I will reveal myself to him or her in a dream. So let's see what it means when a bear wants to take you by the hand. Um, Legs, I don't know what you're thinking about that. You said you can't wait for 9.30. Mm. I'm open right now. Oh, oh, you're already open. You, you already got stuff going on. But I just, that, I just thought that that was an interesting dream. What do you, what do you think about that? We may be on to something. All right. So we're asking everyone to get the first fruit of 57.83 our $578.30, $57.83 or $578.30 um, to your supervising priest. On this Rosh Hashanah, we're going to be commanding the blessing in a few minutes. And um, I may end up changing the letter on today somewhat. But nevertheless, we want to give you an opportunity. Tova Hunter, I see that your 5783 has just now come through my phone buzz. I happen to look down. And there's those of you out there that's listening. You know what First Fruits is like. And we've been trying it to rumor mm. for now a couple of years, and we've experienced the blessing of the Lord. If you're watching us for the first time, you don't know what a Taruma is, you can start by downloading the Taruma app. Yes. And... Um, Prophetess Deborah, tell them how they can download that Taruma app right now. Yes, and yes, and yes. They can go to, if you are apostolic, you can go to the Apple Store and um, look for the Taruma, and that's T-A-R-U-M-A-H. Um, double click on it and just follow the, the protocols and just upload if you haven't, and um, it go right to you. And one good thing that I like about the Taruma app 
um, Your Grace. We also have an e-book in there, the Taruma book, which takes you from Genesis to throughout the Bible talking about um, the Taruma and what it is and how it was mentioned throughout scriptures and stuff. So the Taruma app app is a win-win. Not only that, but it's also teach you, you put in, you made a thousand dollars this week. It keeps you in compliance. So for me, the Taruma app is my app that keeps me in compliance as to what I'm supposed to do, whether it's with my tithe, my two and a half percent to my priest, I'm giving um, to the poor. Um, it breaks everything down for me and it just makes life easy for me to um, participate and to operate in. And um, it's just easy, so go to your um, Apple store, the store that, that has your app and just download it. And it's as easy as one, two, three, your grace. All right. We want you to go ahead and get your Taruma seed in right now and watch God move on your behalf. Watch God move on your behalf because there is a move of God that is taking place on your behalf right here and right now on today. Okay, let's get the prophets and we're going to get some unseating of the prophets. We're also asking you to get your $222.22 seed into the ground so that you can begin, you can begin, yes, even you can begin to get a prophet in your ear at the head of this year. This is a high holy day. Tomorrow there will be many businesses and stores that will be closed because they'll be celebrating because they will be in the season of God. But I want you to know, and I believe that word season in the Hebrew is moed. Um, I'm going to get the exact uh, word for it in just a moment. But um, it's in Genesis chapter one, I believe it is. And I believe it is in Genesis chapter one, verse um, 14. I have recently started using the interlineal Bible um, prophet Stevens um, so that I could start to see the uh, Hebrew under it. And um, if I can get someone to get for me Genesis chapter one, verse 14, um, that will be great. I do have it. Okay, thank you. You can come up to the screen, Prophet <laughs> Kelly. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, okay, we're going to go. Prophet Kelly is going to read for us Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And um, that word is mo. Ed. Moed. Moed. And then that's um, Moed. And it actually means feast. But I want you to see what seasons mean because you may have just only thought seasons, which was the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. But when God said seasons, seasons was supposed to be a time of feast. Let's see how this went in the beginning of creation. The first time the law first mentioned when something is mentioned, for the first time it carries that meaning throughout scripture. What does it say? And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days and years. So the lights was put in the heaven for them, and for let them be for what? For signs. Let's hold it right there, signs. And that word is oath, oath, oath. Olive. Vo, which is a holum. To, oath which means let them be for, watch this, an ensign, a banner, a distinguishing mark. Also, it is, it is also translated miracle. Could it be that there are these seasons when heaven opens up the portals, mm. like he did at the pool of Bethesda, mm -hmm. 
and the sign opens up a doorway or a pathway for your miracle to be created. I know some of you are thinking the master prophet is trying to get something from me. No, I am just becoming the portal or the doorway to get something to you. And so let them be for signs and notice that word there for signs and for seasons and for seasons, which is interesting because we have a conjunction there. And that word season, as I told you before, is moed, which means a time for feasts. These are supposed to mark the reference point of when your feast day is supposed to happen. The heaven tells you when you're supposed to assemble. So if we were in Judaism right now, or operating according to the Jewish calendar, we would be assembling today and tomorrow as we are beginning to celebrate God with first fruits on the first day of the new year. And so this is a time now where we're supposed to come into, today is a sacred season mm. because it's the beginning, it's the head of month. It is a tent of me meeting. So let them be for signs and for season and for what? Days. For days. And I love that. Yom. 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 Um, for days and for what else? Years. And for years. Years. Shana. You see that? Rosh Ha Shana. Ha, or the hey there in the beginning, is a definite article for the Shana. Shana is year. Mm. You see, even though you didn't want to yet, Prophet Kelly, you speaking Hebrew already. <laughs> Rosh Hashanah. Um, you said it. It was your word this afternoon. That's yeah, right. Rosh Hashanah, head of the year. Rosh, head, ha, the definite article, ha, shana. So we got Rosh Hashana, the head of the year. Let your seed mark that I'm respecting, not the head of the year that man has created as January 1st. That's another mark on a calendar on earth. But let's mark the head of the year that God has ordained, which is the calendar of God. The head of his year. What are you all hearing in this company of prophets? Dr. Jordan. Yes. It is only fitting that we mark the head of the year by bringing our first fruits to the head or our priest to the head of the church. Yeah. And you know, Prophet Kelly, we are in sync. And so when I looked at this, I says, you know, it would have been great if we had warned the people and gave people, but most of us are able to disturb 5783 and make that happen legitimately. So I'm saying to you right now, go ahead, get your 5783. And let it be, watch this, to rumor to your priest. Now you'll do what you got to do with your, to the ministry, but I want it to be a mark so that your supervising priest can do this on the one day that comes in a year. This is called Rosh, which means head, right? Ha, hey, hey is the definite article when it's in front of a word. Is that right, Prophet Stephen? Yes, sir. Hey, okay. Shana is Shen. Noon, hey. 
Shana. And when we look at the nikus that is underneath it, that's how we are able to get the sound. Shana is year. Rosh is head. Rosh, hey, that's the, the definite Carter article. Rosh, head of the. We get that possessive word, of the, of the year. So right now we are experiencing what is known as something that had let them be for signs and for season and for days and for what? Years. Years. Read on verse 15. Oh, we got kicked out of Verbella. Okay, for those of you that are um, watching us on uh, Prophet Kelly, can you still hear me? Okay. For those of you that's watching us, uh, tell them, Prophet Stephen, how they can do this to Ruma on the various platforms. Yes, people got to sow that Taruma seed. Yes, that very special Taruma seed that the Master Prophet requested. One way to do it is through Cash App. Amen. If you're going to sow it, Cash App directly to our supervising priest, do it. Dollar sign my Archbishop. Dollar sign my Archbishop. Now listen, take your time. Write out every, type out every word. Amen. Uh, don't, uh, just because you see the Master Prophet's face, make sure you are sending it to the master prophet it's dollar sign my archbishop dollar sign my archbishop it should also say bernard jordan above it you will see his face but make sure it says bernard jordan and they save it as a favorite but dollar sign my archbishop or you can do dollar sign prophetess deborah this is for cash app only dollar sign prophetess deborah deborah spelled d-e-b-r-a now when i'm sowing my tumor seed i like to use zell and so for those of you that would like to send it directly to the master prophet using zell use his email bishop jordan at zoeministries.com again if you're using zell it's bishop jordan at zoeministries.com paypal users guess what you can use paypal use the same email bishop jordan at zoeministries.com bishop jordan at zoeministries.com if you have the venmo app it's bernard hyphen jordan hyphen and the number four amen if you're going to if you're going to use uh, venmo it's bernard hyphen jordan hyphen and the number four and then finally you can always call into the partner care line the partner care line is 888-831-0434-888-831-0434 you can sow that special to rumor see the master prophet has requested amen go ahead right now do that amen and be blessed dr jordan all right let's give a hand for that and we want to give you an opportunity to be blessed as a result of the Taruma. Okay, let's go ahead and get some of the unseats of the prophets as we've um, already set that in order. And um, we want to thank the company of prophets for being here. And we're going to get into our teaching right away. We're going to, um, okay, we don't have too many to unseat. Amen. So we're going to do it like this. Okay, Prophet Terry Stinson, how are you doing? Good evening, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan. I'm well, thank you. Great and great. We're going to go ahead and have you call Lisa Randolph and Cynthia Clark. Yes, and yes. All right, God bless you. Okay, God bless you, Mother Dawson. How are you doing? Good evening, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan. I'm doing better and better. Great and great. I'm happy to hear that. I'm going to have you call Prophetess Iris, I'm going to call Iris Jones and Chauncey Brown. Receive. Amen. Thank you. All right. God bless you, Prophet Denise Bullock. How are you doing? God bless you, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan. I'm doing fine. Thank you. And thank you for asking. And how are you? I'm doing great. 
We got two individuals that have done this 526 seed, and that's the millionaire seed. What a great way to start off God's new year, the head of God's new year, amen, with the 526. I want you to call Donna Scott and Andrea Williams. We see. Thank you so much, Dr. Ibn Jordan. God all, bless. All right. God bless you. All right. Prophet Diamond King, how are you doing? Okay, Diamond King, I do not hear your voice. Okay, let's go I'm on. I'm here. Okay, how are you doing? Great and great, and you, Dr. Eben R. Jordan? Bless you, bless you, bless you. Okay, I just have um, right now one person for you to call. I want you to call Yakim Jordan. Thank you. All right, God bless you. All right, and I want you to go ahead and get your seed into the ground. Given it shall be given. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men continually just go ahead and give into your bosom. With the same measure that you give, it shall be given to you again. Good measures, pressed down, and shaken together. And running over. Amen. All right. Um, I want to do something here on tonight. I'm going to ask that as we move forth into the head of this Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, head of the year. I want to um, challenge everyone this evening that will to go ahead and do a $100 seed, amen, into the ministry, $100 seed into the ministry, and go ahead and begin doing that. And I want to continue this list, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to call on the prophets to prophesy. And uh, we're going to go, uh, we'll start with you, Prophet Kelly. Each of you will do three, and they'll keep me posted. And then we'll go to Prophet Stephen. Amen. And then Prophetess Valina. Okay. All right. Prophetess Kelly. Yes, sir. Lisa Randolph. Lisa, I hear the Lord say it's important that in this season particularly that you stay focused and not allow anyone to distract you. You're going to escape the doors of death, and God says go get ready to get a second opinion. Um, Prophet Cynthia Clark. A prophet said there, he the Lord said, this is going to be a season that you're going to find you're more in control than you realize. God said this is going to be a season of greater awareness. He's going to lift your head to a new height, and you're going to have great insight. Linda McClinton. Linda, I hear God say that this is a season that I strengthen you from within. Get your proper rest, says the Lord. New job placement, new streams of income moving in your direction. Okay, Prophet Stephen, Iris Jones. And the Lord says this is going to be a time of great strength coming to you. You're going to find yourself able to do a whole lot. Mobility is your portion. And the Lord is doing something around joints. That's what I kept seeing, joints. Get ready for healing virtue. Deborah Carlton. Advancement is upon you. This is going to be a season where you're going to find great wisdom, great strength in the area of uh, reaching and extending others in the sour. And that's the word of the Lord. Laughter is going to become second nature to you. Begin to let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Um, Chauncey Brown. And the Lord says to tell you that your voice is being heard. There's coming upon you a whole new audience. This is going to be a time of creativity and great help coming your way. And that's the word of the Lord. 
Wash your hands of all the anguish and you're going to find it's going to disappear your fears. Okay, Prophet Valida, Yaquim Jordan. Amen. I hear the word of the Lord saying that partnerships are going to make the weight and the load lighter. So join in with the partnerships. That is the word of the Lord. And just, your, your mic is not, Let's see if your mic is on. Amen. I hear the word of the Lord saying that partnership is going to lighten the load and you will go further with the partner. So don't be afraid to lock arms and go forth. And this is going to be the season that God's going to give special insight and clarity into the direction you've got to move. Cheryl Riddick. Amen. And the word of the Lord says that great is your faithfulness. Stand strong on your faith and your convictions because you are headed in the right direction. Great grace will move you into a new direction for your protection. And then finally, Joseph Stark's $100 seed. Amen. Speak the words clearly that you are hearing, for it is something that needs to be said. It will bring forth great healing. You're going to go fishing for men. Get ready. New collaborations are taking place. We want those of you that's doing the $100 seed to go ahead and get your seed on into the ground. If you said, I did it this morning, do it again this evening. So in the morning, so in the evening. For you don't know whether it will be this or that or both alike. Okay, we'll start off with Prophet um, Kelly, Cynthia Dawson, $100 seed. Prophet Cynthia, I hear the Lord said this is going to be a season of successful strategies. God says, know that I am leading, and that's the word of the Lord. And the Lord's going to do something with you gathering together your children, family, and people. They're going to have a listening for your voice. Um, Prophet Andrea Williams, 526. Prophetess Andrea Williams, I hear the Lord say, in this season, you will witness the turnaround and you'll rejoice. And that's the word of the Lord. You're getting ready to find that this mountain is about to be moved and you're moving mountains in huge ways in that great capacity, saith the Lord. Okay, Prophet Kelly, uh, Michael Angeloff. Michael, I hear the Lord said this is going to be a season that you'll understand better the moves that you have made. Some have not made sense, but it's going to come together and the puzzle will make sense, says the Lord. And the Lord has opened up your eyes to see how you're going to navigate the business because God says you're moving down new passageways and that's the word of the Lord. Okay, Prophet Stephen, we're going to go to Sharon Lewis, $100 seed. Sharon, there's a new way happening for you, a new door of opportunity coming your way. The Lord says, seize the moment. It's going to be very important. Your timing in this hour is essential, and that's the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for the coffee as well. I want you to know it's going to be like the needle and the thread, the needle and the thread, the needle and the thread. You're going to be threading the needle because you're going to be pulling two things together, two entities together in order to bring about your whole Get ready, you're going to manifest wholeness to some people that you're going to bring some bold moves to, saith the Lord. Okay, Janice Stooges, $100 seed. I hear the Lord says to tell you that I've made the way plain for you for, to walk in. This is going to be a time when you're going to be clear in your hearing and instruction. For the Lord says to tell you that this is this all, oh, and there's a lifting coming off of you. The weight has been lifting. God said, I'm your burden bearer, and that's the word of the Lord. And the Lord says the wait is over. You're getting ready to have new strategies and new structures that's getting ready to bring about a reappearing in your life in a new kind of way. And that's the word of the Lord. Well, we are right now, we've stopped at number 80. Write number 80 down for me, yes, sir. Prophet Stephen, and we'll pick up on 81. And we're doing this for everyone that does the $100 seed. I want it to, boop, pow, pow. There's a word for you. And what a great way to get a word at the head of the year mm. that God has chosen. Wow, 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 and wow. Amen. All right. Uh, we got some breaking news here. Oh, yeah. Breaking news, Master Prophet. Amen. And what is the breaking news? Oh, the breaking news, the breaking news, the breaking news is that Prophet Michael and Stacey Angeloff have sown the $5,783 seed tonight. Just thought you should know. All right, let's hit it, DJ, hit it. That's the prophet, we have some breaking news. I have a good heart. Get up, get up. Get 
Master Prophet. And what's the breaking news? Oh, there's still breaking news. There's breaking news. There's breaking news. We have Yakim Jordan who have sewn the $2,000 seat tonight. Just thought you should know. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, let's hit it, DJ. Hit it. That's the prophet. We have some breaking news. I have a good heart. Get up, 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 Thank you, Jesus. All right, and we have some more individuals that we will need to get ready to unseat momentarily. But we want you to go ahead and get your seat in the ground. Give and it shall be given. This is worship. This is worship. This is worship. Okay, let's get ready to set up. Are we ready to do the letter? Are we, will we be ready to do that right now, Prophet Obed, while the people are out <coughs> prophesying? Or do we need to do this out afterwards? And we send out the letter. Huh? Okay, we have I love you, Lord. Yes. Okay, so we want you, while you're getting your seed into the ground, we want you to know that you're about to be blessed of the Lord. Amen. And who's our singer today? Archbishop, we have with us all the way for, uh, graduate of Virginia Union, uh, Sierra Hill is with us today. Sierra, let's give Sierra a hand. Amen. And um, if she likes, she can sit down and sing. I don't know, can she sit down and sing? Sierra, you can sit here and sing, right? You can, yeah, come right on in, Sierra, right there. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Just good. You didn't know that you'd be on all this TV like this. I, I know. Isn't life something? That's how things happen. You just, you look up, you, you, you look up, and the next thing you know, you are all part of a set, and you're trying to explain to your family, you know, I'm doing this now all the way up in New York here, and I am moving up and down the road six hours away, five hours away. Yeah. You're in the Maryland area. Yeah. Isn't it? But it's not that... Closer to DC, okay, and it's not bad. It's, it's about a, what, a three hour train ride? You don't ride the train? Oh, the train ride is a nice ride. Is it? Yes, I love that train, especially from here to Washington, DC. It only makes about one or two stops, I think. Um, you get the train. Well, yeah. Um, I know from Virginia it stops for like an hour. Yeah, it stops for an hour, right before it goes to Virginia, right for the engine to change over. So if from here, it's like here, the next stop is Philadelphia. The next stop is Maryland, and then Washington, D.C. 
that's not that bad. There's some I'm people. Sorry. Yeah, you would try. You could. You, you. It's not. It really is not bad at all. I like that one. I just don't like when I have to sit on a tr track for an hour waiting for the engine to change over, and I end up slipping upstairs and going to Magnolias if it's open. <laughs> I know. I paid for it. I've done a lot of steps to make up for that. Amen. Okay, so we're going to begin, and um, we're going to um, start this off. We have the song here, and um, Prophet Stephen, you are going to take um, the first page, because this is a good part of our teaching. Yes, sir. And you're going to end right at the open arms and love, Reverend Ike. And then Prophet Deborah, you're going to pick up when money starts. I need mm -hmm. to get a pen here. Yes, I have a pen. Oh. I need a pen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, give me one <coughs> of the other pens. Um, the, the one that clicks on it. Clicking one. Um, huh. And then we're going to... Um, you get when money starts when money starts spending time with you, mm -hmm. and you'll take that to um, click here to confirm your prophetic, your powerful prophetic word, and then Elder Valina, you'll take your money breakthrough is happening now. Mark that. I'll tell let her know. And I'll pick up with. Uh, and take it all the way to breakthrough or what? Okay, let's do this like this. Um, Noah, there's the pen. <coughs> Can you pass me the pen right here? Excuse me, those of you um, right there. Yeah, pass me the Yeah, there. Thank you, pass me. Thank you. Okay, it was, it was right there. I have my whole stationary thing right here. Okay. You're going to start on this life. Two. When I finish, you're going to start here. All right. Okay, let us know when you're ready to, Two. when we're ready to go. <clears throat> Stephen is going to start. You're going to start. Where did Elder Valina end? Uh, okay. On, um, Stephen will take up to... I know where I started and, and, and Valina starts, but where does she end? Okay, um, Elder Valina comes in at... Um, Your money breakthrough is happening even now. <clears throat> yes, that's where you start. Your money breakthrough is happening now, right? Yeah. Where mm -hmm. do I end? Where does she end? And then is that breakthrough or what? Wait, what did you say? Breakthrough or what? Breakthrough or what? what? Okay, right here. Okay, got it. Okay, so um, where are you at, Prophet Deborah? Um, on the first page at the bottom where it says, um, when money starts spending time with you. Okay. And, and where I are you at, pa Prophet Stephen? Huh? What, where do I start? I yeah. stop at money is like high class woman. That's where I stop. You don't read the whole thing? That paragraph there, right. yeah. That, that statement Ike. from Reverend Ike, I stop there and then, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, let's go. We'll we'll catch on to this. <clears throat> and uh, let's do this here. Okay, they'll get me the other unseats in a moment. <clears throat> okay, and we want those of you to begin to get ready and. 
take on the challenge of the millionaire seed. Okay, let's begin. You've got to treat her like a friend. What are you talking about? Treat her like a friend. We're talking about money. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen righteous forsaken, nor her seed begging for bread. Psalms 37, verse 25. We're going to have our sister Sierra. Sierra, what is, what is your cash app so people want to be a blessing to you? Um, it is one Sierra H. How do you spell Sierra? C-I-E-R-R-A. C-I-E-R-R-A. A. One C I R A H, and the letter H, which stands for hill. hill. Okay, we'll make sure they didn't put eight there. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that'd be the wrong Sierra. <clears throat> One Sierra H for hill. Amen. Well, let's you go ahead and sing. I love you, Lord. Important prophetic alert. Shout hallelujah now because an important prophetic alert. Shout hallelujah now because a beautiful friendship is on the horizon for you and it will make you lots and lots of money the moment you start to treat her like a friend. I guarantee it. Precious partners, Shout money cometh now because an incredible money breakthrough is about to happen when you finish reading this letter. However, first I must know you are currently experiencing any of these money issues. Lack of accessible equity, shortage of sufficient cash flow, deficiency of money makers and money making ideas. If you answered yes, then the way you're treating her might be the number one reason why you experience setbacks. See, this morning when I woke up, I heard the Lord say, you've got to treat her like a friend. When I heard this, I immediately rushed to the circle your name on my prophetic prayer list. However, there's a critical cash flow question I must ask you now. How is your relationship with money? Your answer to this question determines whether or not money is your friend. 
Because the truth is, if you don't have a relationship with money and you don't know how to romance it, it won't stay. You heard that right. I will tell you this. The Bible says in Luke chapter 16, verse 9, make to yourselves friends with mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fall or when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. As my late spiritual father, Reverend Ike, used to say, Money is like a high-class woman who must be handled in a certain way. It expects you to treat it with respect, open arms, and love. Reverend when, Ike. When money starts spending time with you, if it likes you, where it is, it will stay. I have so much fun here and feel so appreciated I think I'll stay. See, money becomes comfortable with you because your mind is a comfort zone for it. If you treat money like a friend, it will continue to want to be around you. However, if you reject it, it will leave you. Hold it right there, Prophet Deborah. I like something that you said here that money becomes comfortable with you. Is your mind a comfort zone for money? Because if the mind is not a comfort zone for money, money just won't hang around you. But if it is, you are on your way to a new level of success. Um, continue on. Yes, I want you to shout, money cometh now because I hear the soothing voice of the Lord declaring on your behalf that your relationship with money is advancing for your good. Money will be a reliable friend in your life this season. How you treat your money will allow money to stick around. As your personal prophet, I prophesy that the shackle of money reduction, financial decrease, and money deficiency be broken right here, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Shout with me one more time. Money cometh now. I prophesy that miracle money will begin to appear in your presence as you befriend money, wisdom, money, knowledge, and money, consciousness. In Jesus' name, shout with me again, money cometh now. Your money breakthrough is happening even now. I prophesy the faith seed you release on today shall go forth in divine multiplication, and it shall not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish that which you please, and it shall prosper in the things in which you are sent it. Shout with me one last time, money cometh now. I want you to click here to confirm your powerful prophetic word. Your money breakthrough is happening even now. It's time to make money a friend. Dearest partners, there was a partner I prophesied to who owned the daycare. I instructed her to sow a special faith seed for uncommon favor. As she chose to believe the prophet, at that present time, she was requesting toy donations from reputable sponsor for the children who attended her daycare. However, there was one glaring problem. Her establishment didn't meet the requirements because it wasn't a nonprofit. Have you ever come up short? Under those circumstances, she remained steadfast to the prophet's word and contacted two or more sponsors. As a prophetic result 
one of the sponsors returned her phone call and informed her to bring garbage bags to the offices to pick up toys. To make matters better, they told her to give the toys to the families in need and to keep the rest for her daycare. Yet that's not all. This woman of God was able to leave with 10 full bags for her daycare. Wow and wow. Is that an incredible money breakthrough or what? Yes, you know, and these money breakthroughs are happening all the time. <clears throat> and God wants you to know that breakthrough is happening for you. The Lord has been revealing more and more to me about you. I know that there are times in your life when the hardest part of the journey is simply believing you're worthy of the trip. The hardest part of that journey is believing you're worthy of the trip. In fact, life hasn't been the easiest on you over the past decade because the hard times have left you with many cracks. And although you still manage to be a reasonable, successful person, you often struggle with your self-confidence. You just don't feel good enough most of the time. Is this making sense to you? Today I hear the Lord saying that there, that your breakdown is simply giving birth to your breakthrough. Let me say that again. The Lord is saying your breakdown is simply giving birth to your breakthrough. The Lord says the millionaire faith seed is $526, and I know many of you have sown it in the past, but there's many of you that have not done it, and others of you have sown it multiple times because you see the cycle of increase. On the day that we're doing this recording, this letter from Rosh Hashanah have started. Rosh, head, Hashanah, the year. The head of the year has begun. The head of God's new year. I know you think the head of the year is January 1st. No, that's the wrong head. That's the systems of this world that made that head. But there is a head of the year that has been made in the heavens. And it started on September 25th this year. We are in year number 5783. Well, I'm asking you to do that seed of faith of $526 is a test of your money in this season. Because God is about to give you a testimony that will cause many to marvel at your turnaround. This is the season to believe God intensely because God is making money a greater friend indeed. Now, I'm taking out my phone right now and I'm going to do the donation in just a moment and our singer is going to come and sing. But to do that donation by way of phone, I'm texting 646-762-0400. And I'm going to text in one word, my worship. No space, no space. My worship, M-Y-W-O-R-S-H-I-P. One word, this is my worship. It will ask me how much to give. I'm gonna put $526, why? Because that's how much a millionaire makes a year, 526 an hour. Because that is the hourly wage a millionaire makes working eight hours a day, 526. And then it's going to ask to confirm if that's the amount, I'm going to say yes. And then it will ask me again through the text, do I want that to be a recurring seed? And of course, I'm going to say no, because I don't know what the next seed is going to be. And as we begin to do that seed, 
something special will begin to open up in your life that will start a brand new existence in you. I want you to know you can give the seed right now as I have just done. Do the 526 seed. During this season, this high holy season, and we're coming into the day of awe. Oh my goodness. This is the time now you start purposing, and I'll probably do a special call on tomorrow night for our prophets. You want to start purposing some things that you want to set in motion because God in you is about to do some things. We're going to have Sister Sierra, and we want to get her cash app up so that you can be a blessing to her and share in her life. It's on the screen, dollar sign, one Sierra H. And um, be a blessing to her. Amen. And encourage her in her ministry. She's going to sing for us now, Money. Anointing fall on me. Amen. I almost like to say money fall on me. Amen. But you know what? You cannot worship God and money, but you must worship God with money. Sister Sierra. Thanks, switching today, Ernesto Valdez, Danielle Jordan, and the video department, Obed James, the chief engineer there, the audio engineer, Legs Diamond. We want to thank Elder Valina Bratton, amen, Prophet Deborah Jordan, Prophet Stephen Brown, Prophet David Bratton, and Sierra, thank you being a part of this. But most of all, we want to thank you because without you, we could not be. And because you are, we are. Thank you for your support. Go ahead and get your seat into the ground. Your 526 seed. And if you haven't done so yet, we're in year 5783. You can do a seed, a Taruma seed. You know what that means into the life of your supervising priest. Let's kick off the head of the year, the head of your agricultural new year according to God's timetable. God bless you. And remember, destiny is not left up to chance, but it is a matter of choice. God bless you. Peace. Let it fall. 
Clap of praise. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we have some more individuals that we're going to be prophesying to. And uh, we're going to be getting ready for the ministry of the word in just a moment. And so we'll, um, Prophet Kelly, when you're ready, you can come up on the stage. So we'll start with you. Prophet Stephen, are you ready? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll go three again. Heavenly Ingram Javier, $100 seed. Heavenly the Lord, I hear the Lord says to tell you, make room because this is going to be a time where you're going to see expansion like you've never seen before. And that's the word of the Lord. Significant increases getting ready to surround you in more ways than one. Rhonda Campbell, 526. And I will make myself known unto you. This is going to be a time where you're going to get visitation if I'm visiting you in your dreams. You're going to start seeing that the enemy is getting ready to be destroyed as he's tried to snatch contracts away from you as the small foxes that destroy the vines. But I already see a rebuke coming towards your enemies. Shirley Fox, $100 seed. The Lord says, I've separated you from my use. This is going to be a time of not just increase, but great wisdom is coming upon you to handle what is at hand. You're going to have a day of new laughter that's getting ready to bring a restoration in your life. Okay, Prophetess Kelly, we're going to go to you now. Cherie Jones, $100 seed. Cherie, the Lord says, this is the season that I turn your sadness to laughter. Well, and the word of the Lord to you is this going to be a time when God's going to build you up and there's getting ready to be, you're going to be upheld by the power of God's hand. Okay, Prophet Kelly, uh, again, we have Patricia Saunders. Patricia, the Lord says, you're going to observe my excellent greatness. Start writing, Patricia, because something that is happening in your life needs to be in a book. Your story is getting ready to be told. Daisha Lundy, 526. Daisha, I hear the Lord says, it's important that you think before you speak. Wow, and this is going to be a season where you're going to see things filling up inside the bank account because you're going to come into a significant time of awareness and preparedness, saith the Lord. All right, Prophet Deborah, we had Anthony Burns, $100 seed. I just hear God said you're coming into a new season, a season called wisdom. And the move that you desire to make, Anthony, be not afraid. Go out and start looking because you're going to find that move is looking for you. Lorenzo Daughtry Chambers, $100 seed. Lorenzo, you're in the season of new creativity. God said be open. Multiple streams of income will come in your direction, and you're going to find some things that's going to bring you into some significant blessings. Amen. Devola Scott, $100 seed. I just hear God said restoration in this season, and God is also renewing your strength. And there's more education that's happening around you, Devola. Something is going to also bring you favor around school boards or schooling or education departments. That's the word of the Lord. Okay. Um, Elder Valina, uh, Prophet Valina, we got um, Bernard Jordan, his 526 seed came through. Amen. And the word of the Lord says, greater and bigger doors are opening through kingdoms and through the parts of the world that you have not traveled to. Amen. I receive that. I receive that and say it is so. Mary Weber, $100 seed. Amen. And the word of the Lord says that more attention to health measures in terms of what you're doing, uh, you need to walk more. And that is the word of the Lord. And, you know, God's going to visit you in your next doctor's visit. God's going to give you some insight. And that's the word of the Lord. All right, we're waiting for those of you that get the $100 seed in. We want to get you busy. Okay, prophetess. Okay, Prophet Cyrus Green, are you there? Yes, I am, Dr. Ebenard Jordan. How are you? I'm doing great and great. I'm going to have you call... Um, Rhonda Campbell and Daisha Lundy. I am received. Thank you. Okay. All 
right. Um, I don't know who's the head moderator here. I'm not sure everything is in place. Um, did we unseated. Um, Anil. Excuse me. I I don't know if we unseated. Uh, did we? Maybe we did. Maybe I forgot. To, did we unseat the angel offs? Um, I don't see. I, I don't record. I don't see it on my. I don't see it on my notes, and they're not listing it on my. Um, uh, okay. I think you. Um, breaking, no, you did not. I don't see it here. I see the breaking news. Yeah, we did the breaking news. Yes. And it, where there is a mouse, there's mice. Okay, so what they need to do, they have, somebody need to get on there. There must be a new person doing the lead um, because it's not listed, so I can't cut it over and paste. So I need all of the unseats that haven't been done to be done, amen, to be listed for me. Okay, Prophet Latoya, how are you doing? I'm doing great and great, Dr. Ethan North Jordan. God bless you. All right, God bless you. I'm going to have you call. Michael and Stacy Angel off for me, okay? Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to get somebody to comb through this list and verify and make sure we don't miss anybody at all for today. Amen. All right, we want you to go ahead and get your seeds on into um, the ground. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Again, good measures. Pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men give into your bosom. Okay, let's get into the uh, ministry of the word. And we want you to go ahead and get your seat on into the ground. And we are going to um, move forward. Amen. We're going to move forward in... Um, what it is that God is saying. And we want you to know that God's bringing clarity to us in these seasons of life. Okay, let's get ready. We're going to get into our teach. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, where we left off that earlier today. And while we're getting that, we just got breaking news that just came in. It has just hit. So we got Prophetess Bessie Allen just sold 1053 dollars. All right. Let's sound the alarm. You almost got to be married to this thing. Um, all right, let's hit it for Prophetess Bessie Allen. Pastor the prophet, he has some breaking news. I'm going to have a good heart. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Get up. Amen. We are getting ready to get into our teaching. Now, one of the things I want to say is that faith cometh by what? Hearing. Hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. Uh, we're going to be looking at some excerpts on tonight on the spiritual language of money. And we're going to begin to, but I want to go into Hebrews chapter 11. So let's get into the book of Hebrews chapter 11. 
and verse um, number one, let me get um, um, one of my stands here. Oh, here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse n number one. And I'm, I want to see what's happening here on YouTube. And I want everyone to type in right now, money is my friend. I want everyone to type in right now, money is, is my friend. Money is my friend. Just type that in. Money is my friend. And um, your mind must become a comfort zone for money. Until your mind become a comfort zone for money, money will not land comfortably for you. Until your mind becomes, your mind must become a what? Comfort zone. A comfort zone for money. Until your mind becomes a comfort zone for money, Money will not become comfortable for you. Anybody want to say anything in reference to that? Yes, um, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan. Thank you, Prophet Kelly. Thank you. My mind is a comfort zone for money. When you all read that in the letter uh, just a, a minute ago, it hit me. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, yes, in order for money to stay with you, in order for money to play with you in order for money to be with you your mind has to make a room make a comfortable room for it. i thought of when you go to someone's house and we probably all experienced when we have been comfortable at someone's house and when we have been uncomfortable in the comfortable place you want to stay you relax you you put your feet up maybe or or you know you, you don't have your guard up or anything you just you feel the welcome of the place when you go someplace when you're not welcome you're not comfortable at all and you're ready to leave so you get out as soon as you can well i thought about that with money in mm -hmm. order for money to be that place uh, um to hang out with you to, to stay with you, to be with you, you've got to make it comfortable for it to be there. Yeah, you know, if money is not comfortable with you, then money not only won't stay around you, you lose access to money. Mm -hmm. And you know, Your Grace, this is so powerful what um, Elder Kelly and yourself had said um, while you were sharing, my mind went back um, to be, to have that type of relationship, you must be comfortable with it because if you're not comfortable with it, you're going to have your guard up. So there must be a, a relationship with that money in order so that it can um, be that to you. Yeah. You know, I want us to, uh, we're going to be looking at a number of things here today. I'm going to try not to overwhelm you or overwhelm us because I got a lot of um, new works that are coming out in mm. terms of money. And um, tomorrow night, we need to make sure that all the prophets know to be on with us concerning um, money. Because once you begin to understand that you can have money, money will no longer have you. Because many people have been controlled by money. So I want us to look at a couple of things here. Um, I wrote some notes here. There are, there are reasons why many of us do not have supportive money habits. Instead, we have inefficient, inefficient money habits, mainly from the active behavior models, modeling called conditioning, which explains that how we turn out in life is modeled on our earliest bonds with our parents or parent figures. So your parents gave you the language of money. I want everyone to type that in right now. My parents gave me the language of money. Mm. Because they set up the conditioning. What would you say about that company of profits? 
you know, your grace, um, your parents is the first voice of God, the first authority that you hear. So whatever they are saying to you concerning money, well, money don't grow on trees, or I don't have enough money, can I get some ice cream? Well, we don't have the money. So they are telling you about money. They're your first authorities that you're listening to and that you're embracing. Mm -hmm. And they become, and that becomes your money script. Mm. Yeah. Dr. Jordan? Yes, Prophet Kelly. Yes, yes. I, I, I agree with uh, Pastor Deborah. Um, our money script from the beginning comes from our parents. Now, we didn't get that the money grows on trees, although we heard that around us. But my mother didn't teach us that. She taught us that money was a tool to use to get what you needed to get when you needed to get it, whenever you needed to get it. She made it seem like we could get a hold of it. Now, don't ask me how. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't give us a how in those days. But she knew to tell us that it was something that we could have access to. Mm -hmm. Wow, Good. that's powerful. Well, we grew up with our parents modeling certain behaviors and respective aspects of life, including financial aspects. They displayed a specific pattern of managing money that was passed on to us, consciously or subconsciously. For example, some of our parents displayed the habits of overspending because they lived through an economic recession or a war. Experiencing the former made them desperate to exhale from financial restrictions. Because they experienced having nothing, they wanted to make the most of what they had afterwards. So they usually splurged on immediate gratification, something they think they were deprived of. Meanwhile, experiencing the latter made other parents scared of the uncertainties of life. Death could come any time, and life is short. So why not live restrictively and let the body have everything it wants? So they too splurge and spent like crazy. However, one experience can produce two different responses. Everybody type in right now, one experience can produce two different responses. One experience could produce two different responses. Other parents who experience the same events could have the other effects of being extremely frugal, consequently frustrating their children who wants to experience more in life. Both of these parents, overspenders and cheapskates. We're going to look at these two for a moment. Overspenders and what? Cheapskates. <laughs> cheapskates. Haven't heard that in a while, have you? <laughs> Not that phrase. You haven't heard that in a while, Brother Oh, no. my goodness. Yes. <laughs> cheapskates. Could produce children who would grow up to be overspenders. Mm. While children commonly emulate their parents, they are they are instances, there are instances where they grow up displaying behavior contrasting to that of their parents. Some overspenders adults grow up emulating their parents while others deliberately choose not to be like their cheapskate parents mm. out of rebellion and resentment. Hence the reason we are not properly managing our money are because first, we were probably programmed not to manage money properly. And second, we probably do not know how to manage our money in a way that is easy and effective because it was not modeled or taught to us. However, we need to understand that it all boils down to this one single huge fact that was told by T. Harv Eckert, the author of The Secret of Millionaire Mind, Mastering the Inner Game of Wealth. The single biggest difference between financial success and financial <laughs> failure, are you ready, is how well you manage your money. Mm. It is simple. To master money, you must manage money. What do you all think of that? Master Prophet, this is Prophet Stephen Brown. Yes, Prophet Stephen Brown. You know, um, it has been proven for those that have hit the lottery 
that did not have a, a, a consciousness or were not responsible in terms of maintaining what they already had, they usually didn't keep what they won. Mm -hmm. It was splurged and uh, there was um, not wise investments. And so it's with the, what you have. It depends on the, whatever you have right now, how you treat money, how you handle money, how you invest on a smaller level. And the more you, re as your consciousness grow and you're educated in terms of um, how you deal with finances, it determines if you can handle even more. So it's about being faithful in the little. God will expand you, amen, and there are opportunities to grow in wealth as you grow in consciousness, Dr. Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to just speak for a moment because I did, uh, I did a chapter here called Money Mismanagement and Retail Therapy. Mm. <laughs> Money Mismanagement and Retail Therapy. Poor people mismanage their finances or avoid the subject of money altogether. One reason for this is that it restricts their freedom. In reality, however, they do not want their vices to be taken from them. They do not want to give up the habit that may not be helpful, yet bring pleasure to them. Freedom is not the capacity to do whatever we want to do, what is right. Not everyone can do what is right, but if we have this, we can be called free. It is right not to overspend and to mismanage money well because it is what will be best for us. <coughs> we are free to make sacrifices for a bright future. Unfortunately, others are not. In this, in this sense, managing money well does not restrict our freedom but exercise and promote it because it allows us to be financially free eventually. If not working anymore is what we eventually want when managing our money now is the way to achieve that. Again, we are free to work towards creating a good future for ourselves. That is real freedom. On the other hand, giving in to temptation and immediate gratification for the sake of pleasure is not real freedom. On the contrary, this even signifies our bondage to the passion of the flesh and the desires of the carnal body. For the most part, it is about our failure to subdue the beast within us while God commands us to dominate all the beasts on the earth. So I want to ask you something. Have you control this beast? which can be the negative side of money mm. by not knowing how to manage the money that is in your hand. Mm. And so what can we learn about money? Well, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, if someone can get that, I can have you read that for me. Okay. Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. Yeah. Matthew was a tax collector, so he definitely picked up this part in the teaching mm. of Jesus. Just looking at the context of the book that this came out of. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, mm -hmm. what does it say? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one, the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and man. Good. Can someone read that for me out of the NRSV version? Um, I have the RSV. The New Revised Standard Version, NRSV. Oh. I don't have that one. Uh, well, hold, we got to get it. I could read that. Go ahead, Prophet Kelly. No one can serve two masters. For a slave, either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Whoever you're serving is like a devotion. Wow. That's why you get money so, you, so your money can worship. 
Amen. See, money can be looked at as a king, but the kings got to surrender their crown to the king of kings. Mm. Yes, okay, yes, okay. yes. I bring my money into yeah. worship. Good. Yes, yeah. yes. That's why, that's see, that's why I was, I, I, you know, something in my mind says, wait, you gave already some, a, a, a large seed this morning, but you gave a large seed on Friday night. Yeah, and I don't let my money dictate to me how much I give. Mm. I dictate to my money, it says, I'm bringing you into worship. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the one that is the maker of all money mm -hmm. is going to open up my mind to show me where the silver is and where the gold is. I want to know when was the last time you made your money come to worship? Yes, sir. Ah, that's good. Because your money has stopped you from worship, but when was the last time you made your money come and worship? If I was in an auditorium today, I would say, lift your voices and said, money, come to ah, worship. Ba, 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 mm. Right now, come to worship. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Your money was made Thank you, Jesus. to worship. Mm. But many of you have allowed your money to stop you from worship. So therefore, I want to look at faithfulness in a small amount of money. Mm. The second reason why people mismanage their finances is that they claim they do not have enough money to manage. Mm. This is not a valid reason, and those who use this are looking through the wrong end of the telescope. Mm -hmm. How many know you can end up looking through the wrong end of the telescope? Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. And Prophet Valina, what happens when you look through the wrong end of the telescope? Things that are large <laughs> appear small. <laughs> mm. You know, and <laughs> you know, you can end up missing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ben is over there laughing. You know, that's the scientific mind of it. You know, but a lot of people looking through the wrong end of the telescope and missing the picture and miss God totally because they don't realize that what they call little or not enough to give or not enough to manage or whatever the case may be ends up not participating. Wow. Well, isn't that why Master Prophet Ella Valina, um, when, when, when Jesus spoke of having faith the size of a mustard seed, he called, mm. off, he called forth something that was very microscopic that would grow into something huge. Yes. And, not, and just because something starts small doesn't mean it remains small. But right. it, is the, it is, I think it, in teaching or education, we call it having a growth mindset mm. as opposed to a fixed mindset. So it's like, as the Bible says, as a man thinking think in his, his heart, heart so, so is, is he. So if you think your little, if you think something that is small can only remain small, then it shall because you're going to have whatever you speak out of your mouth. To have what you or, say. And contrary, if you look at whatever you have and look at this potential for germination and great growth and great expansion, then that's what's going to come forth because we were made in the Lord's image. And so the same way he spoke worlds into existence, we speak our world into existence. So we actually need to watch our thoughts and we need to watch our mouths, Master Prophet. Amen. And when you begin to watch your thoughts, you're going to begin to see some things that's going to open up and bring you into the existence of God. Amen. So I want you to know right now that you are getting ready to get set up in a new kind of way financially. Now let's look on here um, when we begin to understand that there's people that have won the lottery, as um, Prophet Stephen was sharing. Yes, yes. No overweight person says they will start exercising and dieting as soon as he loses 20 pounds. Because as we all know, losing weight comes after exercising and dieting. And you know, and that's the same way some people say, you know, <coughs> when I get more money, I'll manage it. Or when I get more money, I'll start tithing. No, that's like saying, when I lose 20 pounds, then I'll start exercising and dieting. What do you want to say, what you what you what you think about that scenario? Because we are treating money like that because we're looking through the wrong end of the telescope. Mm -hmm. We need to start handling the money we have first. Yes, sir. 
have you given the two cents into rumor that you need to give? Or we say, well, when I get more, I'll start doing it to rumor. No, you're not going to get any more. You're going to lose what you have. You got to start where you're at. Start where you're at. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Prophet Skelly. No, you, you, you said exactly what I was going to say. You have to start, start where you are. Start, you start where you start are. Where you're, not. you're not there. But you start where you are. So, and, and losing the weight, then you start where you are, not wait till you get to a place. No, you're not going to have a get there. But if you start right yeah, here, right. right now, yes. then you'll work your way to there. Same thing with the, with the seed. Right now, you may not be at the $1,000 level of the seed. That's okay. Start when you're but if you're at the $100, start there. Let me know. If you're at the $50 level, start there. Hold on. If you're at the dollar level, start there. Because guess what? It won't always be like that. It won't. It won't always be. It won't always be like this. It won't. It won't. God will confirm. Abasha. Perfect that which concerning me. Concerning ding ding. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. It'll work in my favor. It'll work in my favor. It's turning around for me. It's turning around. It's turning around for me. It Thank won't you. always be. <coughs> it won't always be like this. Oh, Rabasha. God will perfect you concern it me. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. It's turning my favor. It's turning around for me. Thank you, Jesus. Use this scene. What is this called? This is called stewardship. And God expects this for us. He expects us to steward all the resources he has entrusted to us. In the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ even talked about money far more often than he talked about faith and lordship altogether. Mm. Amen. Jesus kept having conversations a conversation around money yes, when sir. you understand that money is things or a means of exchange. Whether he talks about the lost coin, mm -hmm. whether he talks about the lost sheep, yes, whether he talks about the son with the inheritance, that is all dealing with money, right? Money is a means of exchange. <clears throat> and so managing money is not a secular thing only but also a sacred thing. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. Money is not just a secular thing only, but money is a sacred thing. I want everybody to type in right now, managing money is a sacred thing. That's good. Managing money is a sacred thing. Come on. Type that in. Managing money is a sacred thing. What do y'all hear about that when we say managing money is a sacred thing? Archbishop, that is a very, uh, it's powerful because it takes us back to uh, the fact that God requires us to be a good steward, right? Mm -hmm. So because God is requiring that, there is a reason why. Um, be faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. So you have to make the right decisions with the beginning of the blessing so that the rest of the blessing will come through and you will have proven that you will use it correctly or cause it to be a blessing in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, Your Grace, that's so powerful. Money is a sacred thing because money also magnifies who you are. Mm. So this is why it is sacred because it's there because it's going to show you who you are. It almost becomes like the mirror. Amen. Mm. And even further than that, Master Prophet, when we're talking about stewardship, stewardship is the job of supervising or taking care of something. 
So whatever has been your lot, whatever you have been given to take care of, uh, it is the supervision of that, of that care. It's like when you're giving a baby. That baby's not going to stay an infant forever. It is going to grow expo exponentially. And so as it grows, it's going to demonstrate the fruit in which you've put into it. Mm. So the more labor and fruit and being cognizant of it that you put into it, the more growth will come out of it. Master Prophet. Amen. Prophet Stephen Brown, <coughs> yeah. Master Prophet, even as the, the, there are many that uh, go for jobs, well, they do credit checks. There's credit checks that deal with your character. Are you one that pays uh, pay your on bill? Um, are you one that are uh, consistent in terms of paying on time? Are you consistent in terms of uh, meeting obligations with your personal finances? And so when you said managing money um, is a sacred thing, it, it tells of your character. Yes. Amen. We have the fruit of the Spirit. We're to be kind. So we don't put bills in our children's name, amen, or put it in Buki's name. <laughs> why you dropped your voice on that? <laughs> Raise your voice. Why you drop? why you no drop people. your voice? Because I said, I don't want to get in trouble tonight. I just don't want to get trouble. But people, people do. <laughs> Some people. Find out their house was in their name. Like, oh. Do things, shysty things, amen. Wow. Uh, do kind of shysty okay. things when it comes to, when it comes to management. It tells of your character. Amen. So uh, it's a sacred <laughs> yes. thing, and it tells us who you really are. You eight yes. years old. Okay, so now mm -hmm. let's look. We read the scripture here in Matthew 6, 24, where it says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will uh, hate the one and love the other, and, uh, and <coughs> you cannot serve God and mammon. You, you saw that in Matthew 6, right? Yes, sir. Yes. But there's also a cross-reference where that same where is recorded. But it's interesting that the same scripture is said in Matthew and in another synoptic gospel in Luke. Right? Mm -hmm. But the narrative is bringing us to a different end. The one in Matthew's gospel says you cannot serve God and mammon, right? Mm -hmm. But then uh, if you skip on down, he talks about, you know, meat for raiment, and he talks about the fowl of the air, and which of you taking, and he thought, you know, he tells you here, and this is interesting in verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his measure, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not. Taking thought, now watch this, thinking about it is deception. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, let me try that in. Thinking about something is deception. Mm. Mm. And the reason it is, Elder Valina, Prophetess Valina, is because... <laughs> The aboutness is the illusion that you're doing it and you're doing yes, nothing. That's the truth. Mm. Let, let's practice this. I want you to think about going to the bathroom. Okay. How's that working for you? Mm -mm. It won't work after it a couple work. hours. You enjoy no, it. it won't, right? I, someone said to me um, one day, one of the adjutants says, is there anything I can do for you? I said, yeah, there's something I really want you to do for me because I'm thinking about it. I just said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Ernesto's laughing already because he knows where this is going. I said, I need you. Can you go to the bathroom for me? Oh, God. I know. And, cause I, but I wanted to get into the world of aboutness because some of y'all treat houses and cars like this, even money. I'm thinking about getting a house. You notice that it's been 20 years, you still haven't gotten a house? Uh -huh. Because you've been taking a thought. And the Bible says, take, take no, no thought. thought. Tomorrow, not even yes. for raiment. No, it no is thought. not supposed to be stuck in thinking. Thinking about it is deception. I know y'all don't like this, but faith only moves in action. Faith does not move around aboutness. My Lord. I'm, I'm losing yeah. somebody. Elder Valina, I feel you want to say something. You're scratching my neck. I feel, <laughs> I feel a scratch come across my neck. You know, when you, when you was giving <laughs> those examples, it reminded me of a word that I would hear when I would go uh, stay with my great-grandmother, and she would say, I'm fitting her. 
I feel <laughs> Yeah, Grandma, come on. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, but, but, but watch this. Prophet Kelly, what you want to say about this? No, I'm going to get off your neck, Dr. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. I'm good. <laughs> okay, we have, we have a young lady that want to ask a question. Go ahead, Sierra. Come on. You, this, is right. a safe, this is a safe place to think out loud. I was just saying, um, when you said thinking something, isn't that like the first step of manifest manifesting something? No, it's no. not even a step. <laughs> Think about it. Watch, watch this. Keep thinking about going to the bathroom. Did oh you manifest? <laughs> See, it's not a manifestation. See, it, it, it will give you the illusion ah. that if I keep thinking about it, one day it will come true. Because dreams do come true. And you have Tinkerbells flipping around in the air. Keep dreaming about it. You'll one day fly. Wake up. Here we go. <laughs> Tinkerbell, right? Go ahead, Legs. You can do a Tinkerbell oh, right yeah. now. Go ahead. They're going to give you grace. Fly, go ahead. Fly, go, ahead. Yeah. go ahead, Legs. They're going to do it for you. They did it for you, Legs. They did it for you. They got you. <laughs> OK. So watch this. The aboutness is killing you. It's killing your identity. I'm thinking about doing the 526. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. And you, some of you even feel good about the aboutness. Mm. You know, I really thought about it. You felt like you completed it. Because you thought about you it. You thought about it, and then yeah. you were gone. Yes, you felt like you could. Aboutness. Watch this. I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about getting, giving you the 526 C since y'all called for it in September 1st. But you know what? As soon as I get some money, mm. I'm going to do it. Well, you know, that's how I, as soon as I lose 20 pounds, I'm going to start dieting and exercising. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. right. It'll never happen. See, it's not going it to happen. It doesn't, it's, work, it's, it doesn't work that way. Oh. And I know we're using examples that you're sitting there saying, well, that's ridiculous. Well, I want you exactly. to hear the ridiculous things that you are saying, yes. and that's why you Daily don't basis. get prosperity. Mm -hmm. The first step of manifestation is to get in action around it. Yep. So watch this. Jesus said to the, to the ten leprosy healed, go show yourself to the priest. The Bible says as they went mm -hmm. towards the priest, which was really endangering their life because they were filled with leprosy. Yeah, with wow. leprosy, what happened if they got among the priests of the people? What did they have the right to do? Stone them. Stone, Stone them to death. So Jesus sent them into a suicidal mission. This is like a do or die, ride right mm -hmm. or die. So guess what? As they went, the Bible says they were healed. Mm -hmm. One returned. They would not heal. It wasn't like Jesus healed me, then I'll go show myself to the priest. No. You As go show went. yourself to the priest. I still got leprosy. As it was the went. faith in their going. Mm -hmm. Jesus must always see your faith, and faith is an action. If there is no faith, God cannot see it. Amen. And faith cannot be seen in aboutness. Thinking about it will not produce it. Mm. I think, Archbishop, I remember years ago you said, at the end of thinking is just thinking. Yes. At the end of thinking is just thinking, thinking. exactly. That's all it is. I like what Stacey Angel loves putting here. She says, aboutness is killing your dreams. I love that. That's good. Oh my God, that'd be a well, beautiful that'd be a beautiful title for a book. Right. Aboutness is killing your dreams. Yeah. And she could make it personal. Aboutness is killing my dreams. I want to tell you ten things I thought about and realized it was killing my dreams. Right? Chapter one. I was thinking about doing the education. Found I, was, I was thinking about it for 30 years until one thing I found out for 30 years my dreams was being killed because thir the first day <coughs> I thought about it, I said, let me erase Take about an this and get in action. I'm going to go enroll. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about getting a house. I stopped thinking about it. I went down and sat with a realtor and said, I'm looking for a house and started the conversation. I was thinking about getting a brand action. new car. Stop thinking about it. Go to the dealership and go talk to them because they've been praying that you will walk through the door. Ten things you were thinking about that you did not get. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about getting me a designer pair of sneakers. Stop thinking. Stop window shopping. Some of you, all you do is window shop through life. Mm. On the road of aboutness. Think about it. 
Well, mm. Just think about it for a moment. Even the word roundabout. Come on. Okay. Now watch this. Elder Bleeding's going to go into all those aboutness words. Right. Come on, go ahead. Roundabout. Yeah. You know, roundabout. Yep. Think about. Going about. You know. About. If I would just Tossed do. About. do what would you say, Prophet Kelly? Tossed about. Tossed about, yeah. Mm, All that aboutness. Some of you have been serving yourself aboutness salad. <laughs> aboutness salad. You got the salad of aboutness to the point that you got goutness with your aboutness. Because mm. now you got a disease in your feet, you can't even move. Mm. Aboutness. The aboutness is killing you. I've been thinking about getting into the market. I, I hear. I've been thinking about retiring. Thinking about. Tell me if any of this sounds familiar. I've been thinking about sending my kids to school. I've been thinking about taking up dance. I've been thinking about taking up martial arts. Right. I've been thinking about taking up macrame. I've been thinking about, you know, it's this whole aboutness that's killing your identity. Yeah. Come on, talk to me about your aboutness. You know what, Archbishop, I, yes. I remember back in the 70s, there was a group of guys and they would say, they would look at each other in, in the neighborhood and every day it was like, what do you be about? And they would mm -hmm. say, I be about peace, knowledge, and education and wisdom. And they would just be on the corner. <laughs> yeah. Be about this. And just being about that. And they're still there. Yeah, they only experience 10% of life. So watch this. <laughs> but, you get, but see, this is the thing, right. Stuck in no, a boutness. <laughs> Oh, well, listen, stuck in a boutness. Wow. I want to get you delivered. Everybody type in right now. Type this in. Lord, deliver me from a boutness. Lord, deliver me um. from a boutness. I kept thinking about an apartment in the city, all this apartment I had envisioned. I, I kept thinking about it. I was dreaming about it. I was thinking about it. I was talking about it. And one thing I real, realized, I got to be about it. So when you started being about it, you cross out the aboutness and you start being. Mm. The first place of manifestation, Sierra, is being. You want to know how to go, you, you, you know, Beyonce kept talking about all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. She started singing about her wedding. You know, she was, you know, she was pretty much saying anybody that wasn't going to be doing right to the left, you know. She was singing, she was, she was sending out all these messages. She, she, she became a wife first before she got a man. Mm. I should say a man. There's a difference between a man and a husband. Because you can pick up men. That's the truth. The weather girls told you it's raining men, and that's true. That's true. Because you got a man don't mean you got a husband. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. I stepped on something. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And because you got a man don't mean you got a husband material. Mm. That's good. I know. I know. It's getting and rough. I, I know. I know. I know. I and know. Out. Right. You know, because you got a man, don't mean you got a husband material. <clears throat> and you got to realize the reason you don't have a husband material because you never became wife material. You only attract what you are, you don't attract what you want. Good. Okay. For the man also. Don't even clap on that legs. <laughs> no, most definitely for the man. The man doesn't want a wife. That's why he's a man. Mm -hmm. He hasn't become the husband yet. He hasn't become a husband yet. He don't want a wife. Right. I talk with these kind of people all the time. I says, you enjoy being a player. They said, best shop. <laughs> I said, you like playing. And I whispered to sometimes a young lady, I said, don't play with him. He's only in it for the chase. Stop running, and I'll guarantee you he'll stop playing. 
Some people like it, that's animalistic. Do you not know if the deer stop running, the lions, the lions stop. will stop chasing? That's true. Because it's, it. instinct, it's instinctual. <laughs> is it, is it inst watch this. If you don't run, some of you have men chasing you, right? That's because you're running. Stop being a runner. Uh -huh. Stop being a track star. Second, what? <laughs> Wait, Listen. I don't understand that. What do you mean? What you? Okay, Sierra, help her with this. Sing the song for her. Go ahead, play it, play it. But go, go ahead, go ahead. I know you know it. You, you, you know it. You know it. I know. I know. You know it. I don't. I can't sing it. Oh, that's a song. I know. Yeah. Oh, it's a song. It's a song. She's a runner. She's a track star. She. What is it? She's going to run away when it gets hard. That wasn't the... Uh, uh, so, um, see, you know, why don't you... That? Sierra, why, why, you, why you left the bishop out there like that? The holy people did. The holy people know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bumping, so watch this. So watch this. There's people that are runners. They're not in it for the commitment. They have no stay in them. Mm. They only have play in them. Woo. That's true. And you got to know in a relationship whether it's a stay or a play. Okay.